It's my brother. Hello, Radu. How are you? I know the movies and the cartoon are in different continuities, but I'm taking this as the final bit of confirmation I need that MH's Dracula is definitely Vlad the Impaler, and you can't stop me. And it was my great grand vamp Lazarus Lefang who won. You shut up! Anyway, Monster High 2 did some things with Frankie's character that I'm not too thrilled about. If I'm being totally honest, I don't really know how to feel about the live-action continuity at all. I inevitably keep comparing it to its cartoon counterpart, and it keeps coming up short in so many ways. So what's the deal with the second movie and the live-action continuity, then? It follows Draculaura as she tries to sue for peace between witches and vampires, with the B-plot following Claudine's run for school prefect against Torelai, who returns to Monster High this year after spending the last one studying abroad in Scarus. The C and D plots revolve around Frankie struggling with some upgrades they gave themselves over the summer, and Deuce wrestling with whether or not he should go to this Gorgon training slash soul-searching thing for the year and having to keep his stuff under wraps all the time at school. Torelai takes up the position of a kind of secondary antagonist, for entirely understandable reasons. Apparently, while in Scarus, she had a run-in with some witches which left her with actual scars and completely reasonable trauma. The part where it becomes a problem is when she decides to process her trauma by deciding that she needs to get witchcraft banned at Monster High. Draculaura, meanwhile, runs into Ellis, a new student who, at first, presents himself as another vampire witch, before revealing that he's actually just a human witch, who snuck in to talk to her because his mother is Zamara, the Queen of the Salem Coven, and he definitely doesn't have anything to do with those other two witches who broke into her dorm the other night. He's totally just here because his mother is interested in settling the ancient beef between vampires and witches, honest. So that was a fucking lie. But Draculaura is so isolated as the only witch at Monster High that she falls for it. The mounting pressure of Torali's hate campaign probably didn't help either. Long story short, Zamara wants to use Draculaura to cast a mortality curse to kill all vampires. Claudine, Frankie, Deuce, Heath, and Torali break into the Salem Coven's headquarters to rescue Draculaura, the mission is ultimately successful, Zamara and her hench people are arrested, Ellis is redeemed because his mom never told him she was gonna do a genocide, and like, he's fine with some light kidnapping and blackmail, but he didn't sign up for this. Oh, and Claudine briefly dies, but then she and Frankie piss off the Grim Reaper by just refusing to accept that, setting up the next movie. On the whole, it's a decent movie. I like the songs well enough, the story's alright, it's not bad. It's just disappointing. Firstly, there's Frankie. So, if you don't know, I talked about the first movie a while ago, and I had one main concern, shall we say, about how Frankie's character was handled. The way the movie handles it is uncomfortable in places, not because of anything Frankie does, but because of how the people around them react. Yeah, it didn't get better. If anything, it actually got worse. They spend the entire first quarter of the movie smiling obliviously at obvious slights and staring vacantly off into space for the amusement of the audience and once again their friends leave them in the lurch. Cleo visibly judges them for it, which, gotta say, after their dynamic in the cartoon, that was a rough thing to witness, and Claudine had a moment where she seems like maybe she's about to explain what's going on before she thinks better of it. Not that giving an explanation would have helped in this case. 
Unlike in the first movie, their portrayal for the first bit of this one was so cartoonishly exaggerated, it honestly felt insulting. The reason the movie gives us for why they're being like this is that they've given themselves some new upgrades over the summer, but honestly... He's a vampire too. Yeah, I noticed, Frankie. Give me a break. The plot point of Frankie feeling helpless and guilty in the wake of what happened at the end of last year and wanting to upgrade themselves so they can be more useful to their friends, on paper, it's fantastic. I would have been so here for it if it had actually been used to explore their relationship with their body and give them an arc about how they don't have to be useful to deserve the life and friendships they have. Like, okay, that's what the movie tried to do, but it so massively undercut itself by treating their characters so terribly at first. It was so bad that by the time the movie got its head out of its ass and tried to have an actual heartfelt conversation between Frankie and Deuce, I was honestly expecting them to undercut it with something inane like, of course, I always show up with my whole heart, it's in my chest. They didn't, but that doesn't change the fact that the worry was there. Actually, the movie hits the point where Draculaura leaves for the coven, and suddenly Frankie is back to normal. Between one scene and the next, they've returned to the Frankie we met in the first movie. Like the writing team suddenly realized they'd entered the serious part of the plot, and 27 seasons worth of flanderization later, Frankie wasn't gonna cut it anymore. Also, one thing I didn't point out last time, mostly because I admittedly didn't clock it, is how weird and uncomfortable it is that live-action Frankie is actually made up of real historical figures. Shout out to my friend June for bringing this up, because she's absolutely right and she should say it. The history of bodies, organ donation, and how we treat our dead is fascinating, but it is also often sad and enraging. The bodies of the marginalized especially have often fallen victim to doctors and scientists dismissing their final wishes if they ever even got to voice them in the first place. You'd think, maybe, that the bodies of the famous and celebrated might be better off, but no, not necessarily. I'm especially uncomfortable with the bit about Frankie having some of Einstein's brain. If you don't know, Einstein's brain was famously stolen by the pathologist who performed his autopsy, or removed without the knowledge or permission of his family and against the express wishes of the deceased if you want to get precious about it. Parts of it are, to this day, on display in the Mutta Museum, despite the fact that Einstein explicitly did not want to be worshipped and wanted to be cremated. So, yeah, I think I'm entitled to feel a little weird about this. As for the other people name-dropped, do I know how Plato would feel about becoming an organ donor? No, but that doesn't make it any less weird that Frankie's parents apparently managed to get their hands on some of his brain. Ethical questions aside, just how? Do they also have a time machine? Because I can guarantee even if we did know where his body was, there would be no brain left at this point. Marie Curie, meanwhile, has been interred in the Pantheon in France since 1995, when her and her husband's bodies were moved there to honor their accomplishments in life. So, frankly, I'd like to know how Frankie's parents even got their hands on any part of her corpse. And Elizabeth Feinler is notably still alive. Another reason Frankie's portrayal is so disappointing to me is that they're still the only queer character in the live-action series, which in turn makes it so that for a significant portion of this movie, the only queer character on screen is also the laughing stock. The cartoon has Cleo and Deuce's moms and various background and side characters. The movies continue to be almost painfully straight. 
Well, they're certainly trying to be if their continued attempts to convince me that Deuce and Claudine have chemistry as any indication anyway. While at the same time pulling off some of the gayest shit I have ever seen in my entire life with Claudine and Draculaura. Seriously, you cannot give two characters a legit breakup song and then tell me everything going on here is straight. Just a couple of gals being pals, singing a heartfelt song about how they wish they could stay together but their paths in life seem to be tearing them apart. Sure, Frankie came in at the end of the song for a bit, but the tension between Claudine and Draculaura? Unreal. Speaking of queer themes and Draculaura, though, there is one more tiny little thing I want to mention. We've been watching you a long time, Draculaura, nurturing your passions. Did you think it was an accident that you found that spell book as a child? Oof. Okay. So, given the whole witchcraft as an analogy for queerness thing, you know... Play along? You mean go back in the broom closet? I just- I'm a witch! This is who I am! No apologies, remember? I'm not exactly thrilled about this little plot twist. Partially because I can't imagine how betrayed and paranoid Draculaura must be feeling about this. Like, can you imagine? The thing you've loved your whole life that's given you comfort that felt so right to you, and that is your thing? Being part of a plot by a genocidal witch specifically molding you into a weapon to take out your entire species? I would never trust anything ever again, holy shit! Mostly, though, I hate this because, like, this is the groomer narrative. This is an adult specifically going out of her way to target a child with the goal to get that child to become a witch in this case, but you know how the rhetoric goes. They're transing our children. If we let our kids know gay people exist, they'll turn gay. If that wasn't bad enough, Zamara's explicit goal with this plot is, in fact, to destroy all vampires and therefore by default their way of life. Who decided this was a good idea? It's so incredibly tactless, especially with the current political climate in the States. In conclusion, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Especially when compared to the cartoon, the live-action movies just utterly pale in comparison. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, consider liking it and maybe subscribing. A massive thank you to the Entmoot Pastel Pink Firefox. I will be back here Thursday after next. Bye! Mm -hmm.